Hello everyone and welcome to this video on Veeam Endpoint Backup. Today we're going to be running through an installation of the free tool provided by Veeam and we're going to be going through and doing a backup of our system and also going through a few restore options as well. So let's get started with installing this product. We'll just agree to the end user license agreement here. Okay, the installation is almost complete. So it's asking us here if we plan to back up to an external USB drive. So in this demonstration, I'm going to be backing up to a SIFS drive, but uh, there is an option here to back up to an external USB drive. Veeam Endpoint Backup will prepare the drive for you, and you can use that as a destination. So I'm going to click on Skip This here, and we'll go Next. Now in this next step, we're going to have Veeam create a recovery media. So with the recovery media, if our server completely dies on us, we're going to be able to use this media to boot our server and restore from our backup files. So I'm going to want to create that, so I'll tick that box and we'll click finish. Now I'm going to save it as a ISO image for now. If you have a CD or DVD writer available in the system, it will appear here as well. And you'll have the option to burn it to a CD or a DVD. And I'm going to want to have these two options selected here. Include the network connection settings from this computer, so it keeps my IP address and also include the hardware drivers from this computer as well. So we'll click Next. Now I'm going to place my ISO file on the desktop here for now in my Endpoint Backup folder. And now we'll have the application create the media. The recovery media wizard is now complete, so we'll click on finish. And you can see I've got my ISO recovery file here, 385 megabytes. We're going to be using this file later on to restore this system after a complete server outage. In the right hand corner here you can see that the Veeam endpoint backup has put a little icon here. If we right click on that, we have a few options. We can go to backup, restore and control panel. Let's jump into the control panel now and let's configure a backup. So I'm going to click on configure backup and here we have a few options. So we can backup the entire computer, we can backup per volume or we can backup per file and folder. In this demonstration we're going to select the entire computer and we'll click next. Now three options are available for the destination. We can backup to a local storage, a shared folder such as a SIF share, and finally, a Veeam Backup and Replication Repository. We're going to be selecting Shared Folder here, as my destination will be a SIF share. Now my SIF share requires access credentials, so I'm going to be placing them in here. And here I'll type in my location to my SIF share. The last option on this page is how many backups you wish to retain. So when we first start the backup, it will create one full backup, which is quite large, or depending on the system. And then after that, it's going to keep these amount of restore points, which are incrementals, for whatever you specify here. So by default, it's 14. I'm going to drop this down to 3 for my system, and we'll move on to the next step. In the second last step, we have the schedule settings. So we can schedule it to run daily, and then once the backup's finished, we have a few options here. We can keep the computer running, we can put it to sleep, or we can shut it down. In addition to the schedule at the top here, we can also run the backup at the following events, say when the computer gets locked, when a user logs off, or when a backup target is connected, such as a USB drive, or when it detects that there's a connection through to your SIFS share. If you have the following options under here for following events, you can also specify that the backup does not run any more than X amount of minutes, hours, or days. And that's just to ensure that the backup does not continuously run in the background. I'm going to untick the daily option here. I'm not going to set any schedule because I'm going to be manually running this. So I'm going to click on create. And the backup job gets created. So we'll click on finish now. And we're going to go ahead and run our first backup. So I'm going to click on backup now. And I'm going to go ahead and click on processing down the bottom here. And we'll be able to see a little bit more information on the backup job here. So this might take a little bit of time to back up the entire server across to my SIF share here. So what I might do is just pause the video and then I'll unpause the video once the backup's complete. 
Okay, we're back and we can see that the backup has completed successfully. So you can see here that the C drive was 79.7 gig in total space and the backup file itself was 17.8 gig and that took 12 minutes on this machine. So as you can see at the bottom here, we have two options. We have restore files and restore volumes. So what we're going to do is do a restore of a few files. So I've copied this folder here which contains a few PDFs and also a readme file. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and just delete all these files. So they don't exist in the recycle bin. They don't exist in the folder here. And we're simply just going to click on restore files. And from here we can simply browse to the folder or file that we wish to restore. Here are all my files that I'm going to be restoring. So I'll select all of them. And you can see up the top here we have two options. We can copy to. This basically copies the files or folders out of the backup file and into a destination that you select here. Or we can click on restore. And if the file exists we can either override it or we can keep it. If we keep it, it's going to rename the new file. So we'll just select Overwrite and the process will begin. So we've restored four files successfully, a total of 4.5 meg. If I click on Show Details, you can see the list of tasks that were completed. And let's go on to our folder on our desktop. And here are our files that have been restored. So the next restore that we're going to do is we're going to do a full system restore. And to do that, I'm going to have to switch over to my management server, which has access into vCenter, as this machine that we're on here is actually a virtual machine. Okay, so I've switched over to my management station here, a totally different server, and I've just launched the vSphere client. So this is the server that we've been working off, Veeambox. So I'm going to shut that down. And while it's shutting down, I'm going to create a new virtual machine. And we're going to call it Veeambox Restore. And I'll place it in my data store here. Virtual machine version 8. Guest operating system is Windows 2012. CPUs, the two, memory is 4 gig, network was VMX Net 3 and Home Lab internal, default SCSI controller, create a new disk, create 80 gig, and next and finished. So all these settings are exactly the same as the original virtual machine. If you remember when we first installed Veeam Backup, it created a recovery media. So I've taken that recovery media, which was an ISO file, and I've uploaded it to my data store here, which is the vSphere-data store 1. So this is it here, Veeam Recovery Media, Veeambox.iso, about 385 megabytes. Now I'm going to mount that in my CD-ROM drive. And I'm just going to turn on the option to force BIOS in the first power on, so I can set the CD-ROM to boot first. Now let's open up the console, and let's start this virtual machine up. Now I'm going to go into the boot menu and set CD-ROM first and then hard drive second, and then we're going to exit and save settings. And at this stage it should boot into the Veeam backup ISO file. Okay, so the media is booted up successfully and we're going to select the option bare metal recovery. Now because our backup files are stored on a SIF share, we're going to select network storage here. 
You'll be prompted to configure the network settings, so we'll select yes. Now at this point we need to load the driver for the network adapter, so we'll click on load network adapter driver. And you can see here under network adapters, ethernet controller, uh, we're going to click here install driver. And the driver's been installed successfully, you can see here that we've found a VMXnet3 ethernet adapter, so we'll click OK. Now let's go into the Ethernet and select Properties. On my network I have a DHCP server, so I'm going to leave these as obtain IP address automatically and also for DNS. However, you can set up a static IP address, subnet, default gateway and DNS servers if you wish. So I'm going to click OK. So we're going to leave the selection of a shared folder and we'll click Next. Now here we'll specify our shared folder, so we'll put in our credentials. So if you remember back to the beginning where we created our backups, we stored it in the Veeam endpoint folder on this share. It's picked up that we have a backup here, which was created on 1st of November 2015 at 12.41pm. So that's the backup we're going to be selecting, or we'll click Next. And if that backup contains multiple restore points, you can select the point in time you wish to restore from. However, we only have one full backup here. So from there we'll click Next. And we have three options for the restore mode. We can restore an entire computer, system volumes only, or a manual restore. I'm going to be restoring the entire computer. So we'll leave that selected and click Next. In this window, it's just a summary of all the options that we've selected. So when you're ready, we click Restore and the process will begin. Now this is probably going to take a few minutes to do the full restore. So what I'm going to do is pause the video again and then we'll resume it once it's complete. Okay, we're back and the restore process has completed. So as we can see it restored 17.7 .7 gig and took about 14 minutes here. So I'm going to click finish and we're going to go ahead and reboot the computer and we'll see the original Veeambox server boot up to Windows 2012 R2. Okay, our server's booted up, so let's log in. And we can bypass this message as the computer was restored from a powered on state. And let's have a look and see our files should still be here. The PDFs and the text file, and everything looks good. So I hope you enjoyed this demonstration of Veeam Endpoint Backup. Again, it's a free tool that Veeam provide. You can use it for PCs, servers, restoring files, restoring entire systems. It's an excellent tool, very easy to use as you can see in this demonstration. I hope you've enjoyed it and we'll see you again next time.